Hey gang, I'm Paul with Stud Pack. Welcome back to the channel. Jordan and I built this 30 foot tall scaffolding so we can cut a giant hole in the side of this house. Whoo, that's a climb. But before we cut a big hole in the side of this house, let's back up a little bit and show you why we're here. This is our AC system in the attic and it's blowing hot air. So that means we have a refrigerant leak somewhere and this is a great big house and we're not even sure where the leak is. It could be in this unit, in the condenser outside or anywhere in the line set between the two systems. Now this is an older system, like I said, it uses R22 refrigerant and that stuff's been banned in the United States for about a couple of years now. You can still get it in smaller quantities, but it is hundreds of dollars. It's very expensive to refill a system like this. And you're basically throwing that money away because it's gonna leak out. So the owners have decided to upgrade the system to one with a modern refrigerant. And that's what we're here today to do. But here's the kicker. This is our access point. And there's just no way we're getting all of our brand new equipment through that tiny attic access hole. Check it out. We've got our brand new furnace right here. We're going to put in a dehumidifier that's going to help out the inside climate a bunch. Here's our coil unit. We've got a couple of pans over here, a brand new plenum. And as you can see, it's not going to fit, much less the AC techs. A couple of them guys are kind of big. <laughs> they said there's no way we can do it. So we came up with four options of how to do this project. Let's head inside and we're going to walk you through each of them and show you why we decided on the scaffolding. All right, we're in the master closet and check it out. This is our attic access that we showed you earlier. And option one was to build a wall somewhere right here and make the end of this closet a mechanical room. But to do that, we'd have to move this sliding we got ductwork there we'd have to move. And we'd have to move the unit in here, move the return air, the plenums, condensate drain. we got to figure out a way to drain everything. All the electric, the gas, and a new flue through the roof. It was way too much time and money to accomplish that. So we scrapped that idea and started looking for other options. So option two was to cut a hole in one of the ceilings here on the second floor. And if you're wondering how they got that unit in the attic in the first place, that's exactly what they did. Right here over this stairwell was a big attic fan. I don't mean a fan like this, I mean a fan like that. That's how they cooled off these houses back in the day. So that was their access. And after that was done, they put in this beautiful ceiling. And this beautiful ceiling right here is indicative of all the ceilings on the second floor. They all have some kind of special treatment, whether it's this molding or faux painting, something like that. So we don't want to damage that at all. And we didn't want to mess with this chandelier or work over these stairs. So we didn't want to mess with that option either. The third idea we had, and we briefly considered it, was getting a crane right here in the front yard and cutting a hole in the roof and doing all the work through that hole. But check it out up there. We got those four dormers. We'd have to work around all those, cut the roof framing. I didn't want to deal with all that. Plus, over here at the road, we've got this ditch and the cattle guard, the way you cross the ditch on the driveway, is made of old railroad rails from the Civil War. We didn't think it was strong enough for a crane. So we nixed that idea. So the fourth option was to build scaffolding right here in the driveway, all the way up to a great big louver on that gable end. And we're gonna remove that louver and we're gonna be right there at the unit. Now check it out. All this scaffolding cost us $199. We went and picked it up, but still $199 for 28 days. That's unbelievable. So we are gonna now have a safe platform to work off of, and we're gonna do minimal damage to the house. Well, Jordan and I actually built this ourselves. We did. I've, I've done a little bit of it in the past, but it's been a long time. It was hard work. Did you get any footage of us doing this? I did. I recorded a lot of it, actually. But uh, if they got all offended over a little extension cord, <laughs> there's no way that oh, I'm man. rolling the footage of us building this. That's man. true. They're going right. to pass out. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty gang, we are finally at the job site and it has been a full day already and we haven't even started with our scaffolding. I had to go pick up this trailer from U-Haul because obviously all this isn't going to fit in my little F-150. Then I had to drive across town, get all the scaffolding loaded up. They didn't have it ready for me, so that took forever. Had to grab some lunch because we were starving. Picked up some PPE and a hoist and now we're finally here at the job site ready to put this up because bright and early in the morning at 7 a.m. my AC contractors get here. They need this done. The sun is setting. It's 3.30. We got like an hour and a half of daylight. We got to get started and get this scaffold built. Let's see if we can do it. Let's get it.
Alrighty gang, we're all unloaded. That went pretty quick. You know, it goes fast when Jordan's not worried about getting that beautiful shot, right? <laughs> but we're done, we are ready to go. So we've already got started with our first course. You gotta put the two by down first under your levelers, regardless. Even though we're on concrete, the scaffolding company says you gotta have those. We got our leveler. And what they call this bud? This was a, a starting collar. A starting collar. And we got our three pieces of pipe. Let's put in our fourth one. Then we're gonna level the whole thing and then we can fly. Shake it while I'm up here. While you're up, while you're down there, give me another one of these metal planks, dude. I'm balancing up here. Great, dude. Yeah. So the next step, I think, Dad, is we have to take those ten footers and start working on our next section. All right. Which means that we have to get the ten footers on there. We tried to hoist them up earlier and we just can't do it from this level right so we put these bars here and now we're going to take these metal platforms come up a level that way we're right on top of that sucker and we just drop it in you keep going yep all right so you want to raise, raise this first huh yeah Alrighty gang, we got two sections almost done. Now three people is what you need. You really need two up top constructing and one guy on the ground feed material. There's just two of us, so I'm kind of going back and forth, but we're making it happen, we're staying safe, and the sun's setting down. So we're gonna move these boards up to the next horizontal row we just built and keep going. Alrighty guys, the sun has set over the Atchafalaya Basin here in Southern Louisiana. It is too dark for us to safely work. We're gonna head home. We'll see you bright and early tomorrow morning. So the AC guys are here and they're ready to go and they actually agreed to be filmed. Now, you know, Jordan and I don't cuss on the channel, but you know, no guarantees here. There might be a few bleeps. We're just gonna do some raw video and film the work in progress. It's not gonna be staged or anything. We're gonna show you what it takes. So let's get started. The boy catches it with that rule of eagle bleep after review. Russell Wilson gets the ball with two big line up, one side kick, the whole side kick. But, they throw a flag after it happens. Nice job. All right. Those doubled up braces are called bridges and they're for our final platform. All right, guys, check it out. Up here on the scaffolding and right here in this gable end, this is actually a vent. It doesn't look like it, but these clabbers are angled. You see where I'm putting my fingers? It's all open to the attic behind there with hardware cloth, and it goes all the way to here. So if we remove all these boards to here, 
we'll be at the attic floor level. Once we get that open, we'll build a platform from the attic floor to our scaffold, so we'll be nice and safe. Now, we're not sure how these are gonna come down yet. We're just gonna throw a bunch of stuff at it. But like I said, we're up here on this scaffolding, so our first priority is safety. Our second priority is video. So we're just gonna let it roll. So let's get to this. I'm ready, and I know these guys downstairs are ready. Yep. You ready, bud? Let's do it. Let's do it. All right, guys, I got all the louver boards down. You can see the screen behind it, but check out all the wildlife right here. <laughs> Years of dirt daubers and wasps. What are those, ladybugs? Yeah. All right, so why don't we clean this up and get the screen out of here and see what it's gonna take to build our platform. All right, the screen's removed. Now you can see what a big access we're gonna have, but this guy's in my way. Now we got this gable end right here. So this whole section of roof to my right is supported by that stud wall. So you got a stud here and a stud here. So I am comfortable taking this out. This was probably put here when they framed it just to hold up the ridge while they framed the roof. So let's remove this and we're almost there. All right, guys, I'm through. I just turned off the buzz saw, but check it out. See how my blade is not being pinched? If the weight of the building would have come down when I cut this, it would have pinched my blade. Since it didn't pinch the blade, that gives me just an assurance that I can remove this. Let's cut a few nails at the top. And we're almost home free. No, we're not. <laughs> <laughs> All right. There we go. All right, guys, we have our access point right here. They measured the largest piece of equipment for us. We confirmed that it's going to fit in there. So two thumbs up on that. I'm gonna leave Jordan up here. I'm gonna head downstairs. I brought some three quarter inch plywood and some two by material. I'm gonna fashion up a little bridge to get us right across here. He's gonna hoist it up and we'll be ready to go. All right, one bridge coming up. All right. Feel. Fine, yeah. Right on. You got some friends, Dad. Huh? You got some friends. On my back? Yeah. <laughs> Ooh. I tell you, I don't like this shit. Hey, I watch them nails. Going down. Where's Chase? Up there with y'all, man. No, you can throw it down. Throw it that way. That's probably good. That one. Just like we planned. Hey, just throw it right to me. I'll catch it. I'm going to do 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 it. All right, headache. One, two, three. I'm gonna put that in my house. See that again. <laughs> These little love bugs, man. What the fuck? He went lying when he said he cursed like a saint. They love you. Yeah, this fat guy don't like heights. And this is a rickety ass scaffolding. Is there a second unit to take out? No. He didn't realize that they had dismantled everything while they were doing the scaffolding. Gotcha. 
Yeah, your whole video of me is going to be you beeping it out. It's you know, going to be great. Right? It's going to be great. And it's fun. Y'all want to put an exchange or two or not? Make it a little bit lighter. Do what? No, that's it. Yeah. Whew. Item three. Headache. Say cheese, everybody. One, two, three. I'm now. Damn, bro, how y'all going to hit the scaffolding stuff? I missed it with the blower. <laughs> like, hell, you did. All righty guys, we got our bridge built like we showed you. We pulled all the old equipment out and we got some of the new lightweight stuff already in the attic, like the new plenum, the pans, all that kind of stuff. Now it's time to lift the heavy stuff. So we got a beam right here. It's setting on two bridges. This is designed as a lifting point. Got an electric hoist here. We've got it attached to the beam with some 3 8 threaded rod. We're ready to go, man. All right. Y'all ready? Let's see if this thing works. Push this piece up, so don't stand on it. Nice. Somebody else do that. I say you got a young bug right there. Good morning, gang. Day number two here at our AC replacement project. The guys are already here hard at work. Yesterday was a big day. We got the old condenser torn out, loaded up, thrown away. All the old equipment's out of the attic. And the new equipment is in the attic. I can hear them hard at work already. I can hear their sauce and their music. Let's go check it out.
gang, we're out here by the new condensing unit and look how small this thing is, five ton capacity. And they say it is super quiet, can't wait to see it running. Now remember earlier in the video, we said we're gonna have to run a new line set on the outside of the building because we weren't sure where the leak was. Well, these guys had a great idea. They got in the attic and they looped together the line set. So the line set is simply the copper lines that connect the unit in the attic or wherever it is in your house with the condenser outside. So they're looped together in the attic. He sealed off this in, put a fitting here and pressurized the whole thing with 300 pounds per square inch of nitrogen. He's gonna let it soak, let it sit for 30 minutes. If the pressure holds, we know the line set is good. Then we don't have to go to all the time and the expense and the trouble of getting up here and running a line set on the outside of this beautiful house. We're gonna save a lot of copper too, and that's very important. Once the line set is proven that it's good, then they're gonna flush it out because the oils in the old refrigerant are not compatible with the oils in the new refrigerant. So we gotta get all that oil out of there. They'll flush it out with a product called Hot Shot. Then they'll purge it with nitrogen when they do the final fit up. get it drawn more, but you also don't want to pull so much that you dry the house out. Okay. There's a fine line between removing moisture and then that point where you're taking too much and you're starting to dry out wood and everything else in the house. Yeah. Right. That happened at a buddy of mine's house. All the crown molding joints opened up, drywall. Since you have that kind of central stairway, we found it was the best solution to do it like we're doing it. Alrighty guys, we're back up here in the attic. All the guys went to lunch. We thought this would be a great opportunity to come back up here in the attic and show you the progress. There's a lot of guys in here, like we said, and we're trying to stay out of their way. Here's our new plenum. They've already started their takeoffs for all the existing duct work, and they're transitioning to the existing duct work with this flex right here. This is that loop we were talking about, the old line set. He took the three eighths, put it inside the inch and an eighth here, heated it up, smashed it with his channel locks, and soldered that, and then he could pressure test the whole thing from the downstairs. Now we know that's good, so they'll tie this into the new system. So one of the main challenges for us on this installation is the return air. This is the return air plenum, and here's the ductwork. It's gonna curve around, connect to the new unit right here. But it is too small. We need more return air so this thing will work properly. But there are some details on the ceilings below that are preventing us from simply making this bigger. So let's head downstairs and check it out. All right. Alrighty guys, we're down out of the attic. I'm on the second floor landing and here is the return air grill. That's the only one for that entire system. It takes a 24 by 24 inch filter. And as you can see, the wood trim details on the ceiling actually extend over the grill. And yes, we know that those are impeding the airflow, but even if they weren't there, it would still not be enough. And we don't want to make this any bigger. The owners love the way that looks, and we're not going to change that. So our plan is to add three return air grills, one in each of the three bedrooms on the second floor. But we have a few challenges there. Check out these ceilings and check out these walls. They are all custom and is not duplicated anywhere. All the bedrooms have a different wall treatment. They all have a different ceiling treatment. Our challenge is to make the return air grills basically disappear. They have to be inconspicuous but they also have to be functional. So we're not really sure how we're gonna do that yet. We're gonna make sure we keep you updated, but for right now, let's keep moving forward with this project. Alrighty gang, our crew just left. They worked hard today. This thing is almost done, but we're gonna end the video here and we'll do the startup and all the rest of it in part two. All that's left is the condensate drain, hook up the gas line, vent the exhaust out the roof, hook up the dehumidifier. What else? I think we gotta pull a vacuum, charge it, yep. plug it in and start up. Shouldn't be too bad. Hopefully they can finish all that tomorrow. Now tomorrow during startup, that's gonna be pretty exciting for Jordan and I because the startup technician will be able to diagnose this unit and it can tell him if it's getting enough return air. If it is, two thumbs up, we don't have to do anything. If it's not, then we'll add a plenum on the backside and add some satellite return air grills like we talked about earlier. Now Jordan and I have been talking about what are we gonna do right here? Are we just gonna nail all the boards back up with the screen just like it was? Or should we try to anticipate the next guy having to get attic access right here 
and build something. Yeah, we're always trying to think about the next guy, but... Uh... Yeah, this one's tough, because if you put a ladder against the building, you don't want to lift something out, right. right? And if it's a door, it's going to hit this, so maybe something that folds in, I don't know. We'll have to talk about it. If you have an idea, please let us know in the comments below. And we're sorry we didn't get to go into a little more detail about the installation of this unit, but really guys, like we said before, we were just trying to stay out of the way. With me and Jordan and their seven techs, that's nine of us. Yeah. That was a full house, no way we could get in there. And we just wanted to be like, like we said, out of the way. Well, one of them said, uh, I don't care about the video, I just want my music on. That's right. So when that happened, I was like, okay. And, they, and they actually had two, they had a radio out here yep. and something different playing inside. Well, each of them had their own individual right. phones. <laughs> so they were all playing something that they liked in their back pocket. So it right. was like, like literally if we recorded anything, it was just copyrighted. So yeah, uh, <laughs> and you could almost tell who was working based on their playlist. Exactly, right? <laughs> exactly. So a little different style video for us, you know, we got the scaffolding right here and Jordan and I were talking earlier about the 20th time you come up on that ladder, you're used to it, right? You're yeah, not, you're not scared at all. You're not scared anymore. Right. So if you guys enjoyed this video, build some scaffolding on up there to your like button, smash it for us. Leave us a comment down below, subscribe if you haven't already, and we'll see you on our next video.